Hey, uh, this is, uh, this is something that's been bugging me a lot, so I have to kind of walk around and, and have this conversation with you. So I hope that the background's not too annoying or distracting. So I have to have this conversation about affirmative action because there's a, a, a number of misnomers, confusion about the, the, the affirmative action process. And, and so first and for, foremost, in terms of affirmative action, organizations cannot have quotas. So there, so there is no uh, quota system for affirmative action. What organizations have are goals that they, they're, they're really trying to reach. The federal government uh, makes these set, these, uh, gives these guidelines, looks for uh, particular indications of diversity and inclusion, particularly when there are federal funds uh, as a part of the process. So, so that's in part important. Affirmative action also, um, some of the, the cues that an organization is really trying to make sure that it's an equitable organization in respect to its re receivership of federal funds is pay equity. So making sure that employers uh, have equal pay for its, uh, its workers. So male and female workers uh, get a percentage that is closer to federal guidelines than not having any percentages at all. So so those are a couple of ways that affirmative action kind of kind of works. But let, let's go, let's follow the logic that some people say, well, I don't have a job, I don't have an opportunity, I don't get scholarships because organizations, schools are reserving these things, particularly for people of color. Now, if we if we take that into account, when we are talking about affirmative action goals or processes, are we talking about a large number of individuals or a few number of individuals? So in the, in, in the best case, uh, in terms of affirmative action goals, an organization may be looking at affirmative action goals that may be set at 10%. Let's take 10% as, as, our, um, as, our, as we look at this affirmative action stuff. So if, if we're looking at 10%, what is it? Is it pretty easy to get that 10% or not? So, you know, we could debate about that, that, you know, there are tons of people in the workplace, so we can certainly get those 10% or it's difficult to get those 10% for whatever reason, but that, but that's 10%, which now lends itself to looking at 90% of the folks that are in my organization being hired. So, when folks say that I can't get a job, can't get a scholarship, I, I get confused because who are they competing against? Are they competing against the 10% or are they competing against the 90%? And so if you are competing against the 90% and you're not getting in, is it possible that you're not as good as you think that you are? And so uh, part of, part of the, the dilemma uh, particularly when we start talking about institutional oppression, institutional um, ways of, of, of interacting, the, part of the problem is that the, 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 the overarching philosophy has been that I am the smartest and I am the best. And so if I'm not getting that, it must not be me. It must be something else. It must be some, some issue, some... Um, social construction that is outside of me that is showing that I'm not the best. So 1964 uh, was the end of discrimination, the end of Jim Crow. Um, free, slaves were freed in 1863. A hundred year years later, the federal government puts in place these statutes that say that it is illegal to uh, create these... Um, environments where people don't have an even playing field. And so uh, policies like affirmative action get installed to make sure that people have some guidelines to, to pay attention to. But what, is, what has happened is that it has also created an atmosphere 
where white people feel threatened, particularly white men, feel as though they are now the, 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 the new black people, if you will, that they are being persecuted when other folks are talking about freedom. And what I'd like to say is that's exactly what the system is trying to do. It is trying to keep people divided so that we don't see what the real problem is. And the real problem is that there are groups of individuals who have lots of power, who have lots of influence, that want everyday regular white people to look at people of color as the obstacle or the stumbling block to their success and not look at the people who are in power as the true and authentic um, conveners of these conversations about what is problematic in, in the workforce and in our school settings. And so it is not people of color who are the enemy. It is not uh, poor working class white people who are the enemy. It is all those decision makers who, who do their best to keep us fighting uh, among ourselves for scraps off the table when they're sitting at a bountiful feast. And so this is Andre Cohen and I had to get that off my chest.